This is Dan McDougall, and he has paintings from the Seawalk Project. Yes. And these are, uh, as I understand it, these are painted on Dallas Road, the stretch of beach between, what, Mile Zero and Clover Point? Clover Point going west towards Holland Point Park. Okay. I like the, I like the fact that the seawalk is at beach level at Clover Point. Yes. And then it, it, it ascends and then comes back down again. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm really fascinated by the, the quality of the work and the sense of abstraction in them because it, you're not getting every tuft of grass and every shrub and, and that's not the intention at all. It's really getting the masses, yes. the forms, and you're taking us somewhere completely different as well. Because from this painting, you end up with a globe. And, and I love seeing the little beach scene in here. It's, it's quite remarkable because you're giving us really a global perspective yes. on, on this scene. Yeah. So you're taking us outside of our own hemisphere. Well, and uh, the intention of, of changing, um, changing the way we look and perceive uh, landscape and taking it from a two-dimensional form to a three-dimensional form and, and somewhat. Now, some of them are whimsical, but some of them are really very abstract. And the most, my favorite ones are the most abstract yeah. of them. Yeah, so, and it, it all came from uh, walking on the seawall. Uh, I guess I should be looking at you. Walking on the seawall and uh, noticing that uh, everybody is a photographer today. That's right. And John, you understand this. I, and I, I don't have one of those yet. <laughs> people, people are, are out there I still have a um, taking photographs um, and looking off into the distance. And I started thinking about uh, how popular it had become, apart from selfies. Um, and, and I started thinking about people making choices um, about what it was they were going to take a picture of and why were they taking it there. If they had walked another 50 feet, it would have been a different image. Um, and I actually started walking up behind people to try and get an idea of what it was that was attracting them to that particular scene. And I, I joked that it was a wonder that I didn't get arrested because I'm sort of crouching behind people. Yeah. So although it's painting and the paintings sort of uh, stand for themselves, uh, it's really a lot about photography and about how we how we see. It's, it's about the perception of vision. Yes, and, exactly. And that's that's really you know the, the sculptural aspect is really what completed for me. You know the the, the paintings you know are two dimensional and they are uh, you know objects that can be hung on a wall. Yes. But the three dimensional objects take it to a, a totally different place. Well, and it, it actually has really surprised me how people have embraced these yes. today. Um, it, it surprises me. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's encouraging, and I, I love the fact that, first of all, that there are scenes that we all recognize, yes. and, and most of us have walked along that stretch of beach. Yeah. Um, but you've taken you've taken a different perspective because they're very smooth in yes. terms of, um, you know, the grass is smoothed out, the the forms are smoothed out. You have, you know, jagged edges here and there. Did you paint any of these on location, or no. did you? Actually make photographs no, yourself. I'm watching these people taking photographs, so I decided I was going to take my camera and uh, and take photographs and work for them. And interestingly enough, there was an older gentleman here early this afternoon. Yes. You don't have to say his name. He gave me a he gave me a hard time. He said in quite an angry voice. He said, "There are no people and no dogs in your paintings." And I said, "Well, that's." Very very intentional. <laughs> and he said, I want you to do another series with people and with dogs in them. Oh, how interesting. But I also saw, I'm going to Los Angeles in uh, May to see uh, Agnes Martin retrospective. Do you know who Agnes Martin is? I don't know. She's sort of one of my heroes. Um, and I saw a short video clip with her the other day that kind of resonated in terms of this. There was an 11-year-old child in her studio, and she was ignoring all the paintings and the interest.
interesting things, but there was a red rose in a vase on the table, and the child was fixated on this red rose. So Agnes Martin, who was a very, very elderly lady, said, do you think the rose is beautiful? And the little girl said, oh yes, it's, it's very beautiful. And then Agnes Martin took the rose out of the vase and held it behind her back and said, do you think the rose is still beautiful? And she said, oh yes, it's still beautiful. And that kind of resonated for me that you can change something uh, without destroying what it's all about. Well, and, and that, that's, I'm glad that you explained that because it's really the, you've refined the essence of what an individual painting represents. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and you've given us, in many cases, a puzzle. You know, you've given us something that's three-dimensional, and how do we resolve that? And how do we resolve it in terms of the paintings? Yeah. And well, you're a photographer. One of my favorite photographs, do you know who Rodney Graham is? Yeah. I saw an exhibition of his, Urban Landscapes, uh -huh. <coughs> probably eight or nine years ago at the Vancouver Art Gallery. And one of my favorite pieces that kind of really rocked me was a, a big oak tree. You may know this photograph. A big, big oak tree that sort of filled the frame of the photograph. And the photograph was like six feet by four feet or five feet. But he actually hung it upside down. Right. Do you know the photograph? I I've, yes. And, I, and when I was doing these, I sort of, I, I went back to, to that uh -huh. and thinking that that was one way of, of, of changing something without changing it. Changing the optics and changing yeah. the, the way, the perception of, of what it is that yeah. we see. And I had completely forgotten about that photograph until I started working on these. So anyway. Well, well Dan, I think it's a really challenging project that you've created for yourself. And, and it's, uh, we've had wonderful response to it. Oh, good. And, and people are very excited to see your work and to see it, uh, people who know your work in other formats, to because see this as something different. completely new. Yes. And yeah, I love when an artist can reinvent how they produce something and what it is that they're, they're doing with their art. I yeah. think that's well, a wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. thank you. And thanks for the opportunity. Oh, you're yeah. welcome. Thanks, Efren, for the opportunity to yes. see it.